Hello, everyone. If you could just give us one moment to get started. Hello, everyone. Welcome back. Um, if this is your first time with us, welcome. We're excited you're all here today for another episode of Cooking Connected. My name is Jordan. Joining me today is our volunteer, Julia, as well as my coworker, Sajwa. Both Sajwa and I are program coordinators with the Cooking Matters Minnesota program with the University of Minnesota Extension. And as I mentioned, Julia is one of our volunteers. So normally a Cooking Matters class is a nutrition-based six-week cooking class um, that is in person. Uh, usually we feature a nutrition educator and a chef that work together um, to teach our participants how to make a healthy, delicious, affordable meal, as well as some nutrition to go along with that recipe. Uh, today we're hoping to follow that same format. Um, we are going to be making a healthy chicken pot pie. Uh, we would like to thank the creator of this recipe, Aaron Clark, um, with wellplated.com. You can find the uh, link to the recipe both in the live chat as well as in the description of all of our videos. So today Sajwa will be our chef and Julia will be our nutrition educator. So just like every week, we do have one uh, more thing for you guys. If you could please take our survey, um, it really helps us to make our videos better as well as um, continue our work in the community. So if you could please take our survey, we would really appreciate it. For this survey, you will need a program code, which I have right here. This week's program code is E097923. And you can find uh, the survey link, again, in the live chat, as well as in the description. So when you get a chance after this video, if you can, please take our survey. We would greatly appreciate it. Uh, with that, let's go ahead and turn it over to Sanjwa. Thanks, ladies. All right, thank you, Jordan. Um, hi, everybody. So like Jordan said, today we are gonna be doing a healthy chicken pot pie. Um, thanks again to Aaron Clark with wellplated.com for that recipe. Um, as always, before we get started, I wanna review a couple of kitchen safety things and things that you should just be doing anytime you do anything in the kitchen. So first we wanna make sure that we are washing our hands, that we wash our hands for 20 seconds, getting in between the fingers, around those wrists, um, underneath any fingernails, all of that, and that's really important. Uh, you can sing your ABCs twice or twinkle, twinkle, little star, but as long as you get to 20 seconds, that's what you need there. Um, and then also, as you can see over here in my chef's view, I've already done my mise en place. Um, so I've set out all the things that I'm gonna be using to get today to keep me on track so I'm not in and out of those cupboards. Um, today we are going to be using some chicken, so that's going to be especially important. And I've also cleaned and sanitized my work area today. So by cleaning, I mean removing any visible debris and then sanitizing, I use a disinfectant to get rid of any bacteria or germs that might be still on my station. So now let's go ahead and get started with the recipe. All right. So the first thing we're gonna do is get started with um, some of the prep work. Today we're doing a chicken pot pie. We're including a lot of different veggies in there. As you can see, carrot, celery, onion. I've also got some mushrooms and I've got some frozen peas and carrots back there. Um, we've already rinsed our vegetables today, so I don't have to worry so much about that. I can just move straight ahead with my recipe. Now, first I do wanna start with my onion. Um, I have just like this extra half of an onion left over from another recipe. So I wanna just finish using that. It's already been cut according to the way we normally do our onions. So I cut that in half and then it looks like I had already cut off the front part. So there's still that fuzzy piece back there to hold everything together. I'm gonna follow the natural grooves of my onion here. Practicing my knife safety. So making sure I'm pinching the blade with my index finger and thumb on the back and wrapping my fingers around the handle like that to give me nice control there. So let me finish dicing this guy. And you're gonna wanna do a size that's comfortable for you to eat um, with a chicken pot pie. I don't want huge chunks, but also I don't want the onion to disappear. So just keep that in mind. I'm gonna do a nice quick dice on this guy. Then I like to cut off these edges here. I want to use as much as I can. And then something like this, I'm going to save for my broth bag later on. 
So I'm gonna add that here in my container with my frozen peas because they're gonna be cooked together at the same time as you'll see later on. And then I'm gonna cut my other onion. I just wanted to use that half up and I really love a nice strong onion flavor. Um, so adding a little extra doesn't hurt. So here's my onion untouched. I'm just gonna cut that guy in half here like so. I'm gonna peel off my skins and save that for later. All right, now I'm gonna cut off the little tip at the front, not the fuzzy end, but just that part at the top saving that for later. Following the natural grooves of my onion here. So we get a nice cut like so, and it's all connected there. Then I'm gonna go ahead and dice that. And we're gonna do that again with this other half too. It looks like you're using the claw hand on that when you're chopping for safety there. Yes, I am. And then I'm saving this little bit for my broth bag. If you guys see me turning around to put something back there, it's my little broth bag section, so. <laughs> yes, but yes, I am using the claw with my other hand to make sure that I'm protecting my knuckles. All of that good stuff. Yeah, so today, you know, we are gonna be using like carrots, celery, onion, I decided to throw a little bit of garlic into this recipe myself, um, and also some mushroom. But for those of you guys joining us today, why don't you comment any other veggies that you might see yourself adding to a pot pie or any other um, substitute that might go good in a pot pie? I think it would be really good with some sweet potatoes. Oh, yes. Oh my goodness. <laughs> and those are in season right now. And so many things with sweet potatoes are coming out. You know, that makes me think about our shepherd's pie that we did a couple of weeks ago. Another comfort food. It looked fantastic. Okay, so that's my onion and I'm just going to put that back in here and again, I have that with my frozen peas because they are going to be cooking at the same time. Um, this recipe only calls for one onion, just a reminder, but um, I really like that onion flavor, especially in a pot pie, so I'm going to add a little bit. One of our viewers said that red or yellow pepper might go well in this as well. Oh yeah, that's a great idea actually. <laughs> so um, next I'm gonna move on and I'm gonna work with my celery. Um, you know, celery definitely comes in these stalks and they're usually connected down here at the bottom. So whenever you're cleaning, make sure you get inside there and clean out any dirt that might still be on there. I mean, hey, our veggies come from the ground. So there might be a little dirt there. Nothing bad about that, that's natural, but we don't wanna put it in our food. so. Make sure that you're taking the extra time to really, um, you know, clean those veggies and rinse them off. Um, we have another viewer that says adding corn would be a good addition as well. Ooh, the corn. That's a good idea. I don't believe I've had corn in a pot pie before. Or maybe I have. And it was just too tasty to notice. <laughs> so as you guys can see here, I am just taking my time. I'm doing some slices with my celery here show you guys what that looks like. Um, I'm using my claw down here and moving back as I go. Then I'm still practicing my regular knife handling skills as I go. Um, this recipe calls for one celery stock, you know, and I went ahead and I did add some extra celery that I prepped earlier um, because, you know, I say, why not add some extra vegetables? It's not gonna hurt the recipe, right? Okay, so that's my celery stock. I'm gonna put that in here as you can see, I have some prep done already. 
Um, the next thing we're going to work on is our carrots. Now the carrot is a very dense veggie. Um, it does call, this recipe calls for three carrots. I've already prepped one of mine that you can see over there. Um, so why don't I go ahead and show you how I went about doing that. Um, with carrots, they naturally have these, well, maybe this guy will be a little bit easier to see. They naturally have these grooves on there. And these like, um, there you go, you can see that. Kind of like markings and sometimes people get a little bit nervous about eating that. That's totally fine to eat. I just went ahead and did a nice rinse with my veggies and rubbed them down. Um, and you don't have to peel before using this. You can use it right ahead if you clean it. So I'm gonna go ahead and cut off my top. See this top is a little bit brown there. I'm just gonna take that off off the top of my other one and these perfect for my broth bag later. Now because the carrot is so dense we want to make sure that we're making nice even slices with this guy so that it'll cook evenly and then on the same note I want to make them kind of thin so that they'll cook quickly. So I got my claw hand here and I'm just going to take my time and go down the carrot like so. And let me show you a little bit of what we're working with really nice and small there. So let's continue with our carrot here. Yeah, and while you're going on the carrots, um, I just wanted to talk a little bit about all of the kinds of vegetables that you can use. Um, one really great thing to look out for, especially as we're going more into winter is frozen vegetables. So with this recipe, you could add Pretty much any kind of frozen vegetable that you want. You could even do the carrots as frozen instead of fresh if that's what you have access to. And a lot of people tend to think that frozen vegetables are less nutritious than fresh, but that's really not true. So I don't want you all to, to be afraid of using frozen vegetables because you know, you've heard that they're not, not quite as good for you. Um, and in fact, sometimes frozen vegetables can actually be healthier because usually um, if vegetables are going to be sold fresh, they're picked before they're all the way ripe. And that means that they don't have quite all of the nutrients that they could have if they were allowed to ripen on the vine. And they do that because they want the vegetables to, to be ripe when they make it to the grocery store, which can be anywhere from three days to two weeks even. Um, so they pick them early so that they are ripe by the time they get there, but ripening not on the plant doesn't add any extra nutrients to it like if it ripened when it was on the plant. So with frozen vegetables though, they do pick them when they're ripe and they always pick them right when they're perfectly ripe and freeze them right away. You know, some, some different companies can freeze their vegetables within a couple of hours of being picked. So that really locks in a whole bunch of nutrients that might get lost in transport because the more the vegetable sits, the less it's gonna have in it. So, so frozen vegetables are actually a really good way to keep a lot of nutrition in your life. Um, like I said, they're not any less nutritious than fresh. Sometimes it can be cheaper, especially if vegetables are out of season. So that is a really great time to use frozen instead of fresh. I like carrot there. Let me grab that guy. <laughs> awesome. Um, thank you for that, Julia. We really appreciate that information. Um, so next I am going to go ahead and work with my garlic here. I decided to add a couple of cloves of garlic to this recipe. Um, it's not necessary. The recipe doesn't call for it, but I really enjoy garlic um, in my food. So I'm going to just add some. And we've shown this technique quite a few times. I feel like almost every video we do, we've done the garlic technique. So I'm just going to go ahead and work through that. I have my knife facing with the blade facing away from me and I'm going to push down with the palm of my hand. A nice crunch there and that's going to help it make it easier for me to peel the skin off of that garlic there. I'm going to set that skin aside for my broth bag. And if you're uncomfortable doing it with your knife, you can use another cutting board or another flat surface, maybe like a plate or something to help you with that smushing technique. Um, they'll all work just the same. Okay. 
Okay. So now I've got the um, skins peeled off of that. I'm just gonna cut off that little edge of the garlic that can be a little firm where it was rooted. And now I'm gonna do a little slice with these guys. And as usual, I'm gonna go ahead and turn it into a mince using one of two techniques. And I can show you what those two techniques are right now. I'm gathering my garlic here into a nice tidy pile. And I'm just gonna be holding my knife and doing a rocking uh, motion up and down here. That's one technique. Then the other technique, of course, um, if you're not comfortable with that rocking motion, you can pull your garlic together in a nice tidy pile, pinch the top of the blade, and just go up and down. So either of those will work with the mince. Um, you know, do whichever one you feel comfortable with. The second one does take a little bit more practice right here than what I'm doing right now. Um, but I really like it, it makes me feel fancy. <laughs> One of our viewers um, suggested using a flat bottom of a glass, um, I'm assuming to smash the garlic in. Oh yeah, that would be great. Something we all have on hand. Yeah, that's a good idea. I like that one. So I'm adding my garlic to the same container as my frozen veg and then also my onion. We're gonna be adding them at the same time. So I, that's why I'm gonna put them together just so I remember that. And that takes care of my garlic, you guys. Very easy, simple. Now let's move to our mushrooms. You can probably tell that I've already done a little bit of prep work here because um, this recipe does take a little bit longer for our sakes, but I'm gonna just go ahead and work on a couple of mushrooms here. Um, mushrooms sometimes will come in a package and it'll say like already been washed or previously washed or pre-washed, something like that. Um, you still wanna go ahead and do a good rinse on these guys and rub them down to get rid of any dirt that might be in the crevices. Because I did find some as I was working with my mushrooms today. So keep that in mind. And you can or you don't have to do this, but I do like to pull this little stem part out and cut that separately. Just because it, you know, it's a little bit easier to have a more steady mushroom sitting like that with the stem on the side. So I'm going to do that. It just makes it a little bit more steady for me. But we're still going to use those stems, you guys. Waste not. So I'm just gonna do some slices with this guy. And I'm gonna go back the opposite way to turn that into a nice dice. Very simple. Um, we actually did get a really good tip uh, for cutting mushrooms. If you actually take all of those mushroom caps and use like um, a wooden skewer and then just slice down the side of your mushrooms, you can slice them all at the same time, if that makes sense. Okay. Okay, our viewers today with all the tips and tricks. Thank you guys. You know, I've never heard of that one, but I definitely want to give it a try because that sounds epic. <laughs> yeah, sure. And if it's going to save me time in the kitchen, why not, you know? Thank you. So I've just got the those guys cut up and then I'm going to work with these stems here. We are going to use those. Yep their mushrooms too. So we're gonna just do a little rough chop on that. Kind of trying to keep things about the same size, you guys, because we want it to cook nice and even. All right. So now we are ready to move on to the stove. I am gonna just move this cutting board out of my way. Okay, you guys should be able to see my stove section over there. Perfect. We are gonna put the fire on. Um, you're gonna wanna use about two tablespoons of oil. I can kind of eyeball what that looks like. Just enough to kind of coat your pan there. And the first thing we wanna start with cooking is actually gonna be this celery and carrot mixture. Just like I said, the carrot is a very dense vegetable, so it'll take some time to cook. And we don't want, well, I personally don't want a hard, crunchy carrot in my pot pie. <laughs> so we want to give that the time it needs to cook adequately. So let's go ahead and put these guys in here. 
carrot and celery. Or you could end up with perfectly cooked carrots and everything else mush. <laughs> right, yeah, exactly. Yep, so that's why we try to remember the um, cooking or cutting things about the same size, why that's so important. Um, yes, so I've got that on the heat right now. And it's gonna be a couple of minutes um, for these to soften up. And um, I don't know if you have a little bit of more nutrition for us, Julia, but you can definitely step in when you are ready. I do for sure. <laughs> uh, so one thing I wanted to mention, this pot pie has a pie crust on the top of it. So after Sajua gets everything put together, she'll add a pie crust on top. And Sajwa, I think you're using a pre-made one. Is that right? I am today just because of, um, you know, our time purposes, I am going to be using a pre-made pie crust. But um, the option I chose actually was a low fat option. So there were other options, but I chose one that had zero uh, trans fat in there. So, you know, keep an eye on that. If you're doing a pre-made option, you can make a healthy choice. But Julia, I think you have another option for us, actually. I sure do. On the blog that this came from, from wellplated.com, they actually have a recipe for a whole wheat crust. Um, and whole wheat is something that we want to kind of work into our diets. Um, it's more nutritious than refined grains. So this would be kind of the difference between whole wheat flour and all-purpose flour. Um, they're both made out of wheat, so it's... It's kind of deceiving sometimes if you're in the grocery store and you see a loaf of bread that says wheat bread on it, that doesn't mean that it's whole wheat. So you have to specifically look for the word whole in that they try and trick you. Um, but this pie crust has those whole grains in it. And so that's a really good thing to kind of add into your diet. Whole grains have more vitamins, more fiber in them, iron, and even more protein. And most whole grains are considered a good source of protein. So that means that they have more than 10% of what you need in, in a day. So with that, with this recipe, it calls for a blend of all-purpose flour and whole wheat flour, which is a great way to kind of make it a little bit more palatable if you're used to having those refined grains. So instead of being super crunchy and very earthy and nutty flavored that you might not be used to, you can do a half and half. Um, and in addition to that, they actually do even make whole wheat pastry flour, which is finer than regular whole wheat flour. So that can again be something that you can use to kind of get yourself used to doing the whole grains instead of just jumping right in to 100% whole grains for everything um, to kind of work in little steps to get yourself and your family used to it can be a, a great way to, to go about doing that. Um, and the USDA recommends about half of our grains be whole for every day. So that would be about three servings of whole grains. And that can be anything from, like I said, the whole wheat flour, whole wheat bread. If it says whole grain bread on it, that counts too. Oatmeal is a whole grain, brown rice, even popcorn is a whole grain. With that, you got to make sure not to cover it in butter and salt, <laughs> keep it on the healthy side, but popcorn is a whole grain and that counts. <laughs> All right, thank you so much. So we are still letting our carrot and celery mix cook down a little bit. We just wanna cook that until our carrots are a bit softer. And while we do that, I wonder, um, I don't know if you guys caught me doing it, but I have a little container of water here. Um, I had oiled down my pot before or my, I'm sorry, my skillet before, and I noticed things drying out, I just went ahead and added a little bit of water so I didn't have to add more oil. And that's maybe a little bit of a healthier option when you're doing a quick saute on something, especially if you already used oil already. So now let's go ahead and work with our chicken. As you may have noticed, I finished um, prepping all of my raw ingredients before moving to my meats. And what I'm going to do now is I, I move my station and my mise en place is all moved out. Everything's cleared um, just in case. So if any of that meat, you know, was to touch any of this stuff, none of my other food would be affected. Now, of course, we are cooking this all together. So I know you may be thinking, why should I be going through that extra step? But it's just really important to keep that practice as a habit um, in the kitchen, because if you are um, one day prepping 
meats and fresh things, you don't wanna have that cross contamination issue. I also have a new clean knife and a, my meat cutting board. This one I like to do separately for my meats. So I'm gonna cut my chicken breast into some small cubes, which we will be adding to our um, skillet a little bit later. And I'm just gonna do a little cutting here with slices first. Um, this recipe would work really well if you decided to do like a shredded chicken. That would also be really nice in the pot pie. But for today's purposes, we're just gonna do some um, small chicken cubes. This would be also a great way to use leftovers. If you have baked chicken or something like that from earlier in the week, okay. you wanna kind of switch it up so you don't get bored eating the same thing over and over again. Take that leftover cooked chicken, just shred it up and use that. It's also a good way to cut costs and save some money if you already have that food. Might as well use it. Yeah, and speaking of... Um, having things prepped ahead, like that leftover chicken I was talking about, you can actually make the filling for this in advance completely. So you can do all of this stuff that Sajwa has been doing so far um, in advance and keep it either in the fridge or in the freezer for, I think the fridge was three days it sat on the blog and the freezer for up to three months. And then whenever you're ready to cook it, just take it out, put the pastry on top and then throw it in the oven. So it can be really quick that way. And if you were gonna make this for Thanksgiving or something like that, when you don't wanna spend all day in the kitchen, this would be great <laughs> to do in advance of that and then just have it ready to go. All right, so what you guys saw me there was I just finished cutting up my chicken. I'm gonna set that to the side in a bowl. I um, washed my hands <laughs> and now I'm just gonna do a quick, quick spritz of my area with a little bit of my disinfectant spray before I carry on as those carrots and celery are still cooking for us, okay? Julia, do you have any suggestions for our viewers for um, vegetarian proteins that they could add to this? Absolutely. If everybody's been <laughs> watching for a little bit, they would know I'm vegetarian. So I do have um, some suggestions I would love to put white beans in this, like cannellini beans or navy beans. Um, you could also use chickpeas. I feel like that texture would be a little bit firm for my preference, but if that's something that you really enjoy, um, you could definitely do that. But those white beans would be a little bit creamier um, and kind of kind of blend in more, I think. Um, and they also have a nice neutral flavor, so they take on the flavors of everything that you're cooking them with. So I think that would be prime. <laughs> I would love to make this with white beans. All right. So I'm just checking on our carrots and it looks like they've cooked down quite good. I can kind of take my spatula and cut through them. So they're pretty soft there. So at this point, what I want to do is I want to go ahead and add my frozen vegetable, onion and garlic mix. I'm also going to go ahead and add my mushrooms. And then after that, we're going to add our chicken, okay? So let's add this in. It's great mm. that there are so many different kinds of vegetables in this recipe. Yeah, right. I love it. And, you know, thinking back to the recommendation from some one of our viewers, having that bell pepper would be a great way to substitute the other colors of the rainbow that are missing in here. Mm -hmm. So like the reds and the yellows and then, you know, we would get orange from sweet potatoes and things like that. So those are all great options. Yeah. All right. And while that's all cooking, I can go ahead and add my mushrooms in. That is looking really good so far. Oh, thank you. Okay. 
Great. And we're just going to give that a moment. And then at this point, like Julia mentioned, if we were going to be doing vegetarian options, this would be where a great point to add those beans that she mentioned or any of the other alternatives. Um, but we're going to go ahead and finish cooking this a little bit. Just going to add a little dash more water. So I don't have to keep adding oil. <laughs> All right. Not only would that cut down on the fat, but if, if you were to add too much oil, it could also make it kind of a greasy end product and doesn't sound yeah. yummy. Yeah, that's a great point. Um, that does kind of help adding water, um, helps kind of keep it light, you know, and, and this is supposed to be a healthy chicken pot pie option, so. <laughs> but still full of flavor. Still full of flavor, you got that right. So I'll take a moment and actually talk about my seasonings here. Um, so our recipe today calls for some fresh thyme. Um, you could add some salt and pepper and then garlic powder. I also added a little bit of, I had some fresh sage, which I thought would be lovely in this recipe. I've got a little bit of paprika. Um, I had some fresh basil back over there too. And then I've got my, um, I actually had dry thyme and I added a little bit of onion powder too. And yes, I am using salt, but I am watching my salt. And instead of adding too much salt, I'm trying to make sure I'm seasoning with my herbs and spices because that's really going to give us the flavor I'm looking for rather than just the salty flavor. So that's just my um, seasoning mix here today. Okay, yep, I see my onions are becoming translucent and my mushrooms are getting nice and um, brown in color. So at this point, what we want to do is, um, I believe the next step is we're going to be adding the chicken, our chicken cubes. I'm going to put this away really quick. We want to let that cook. And some people might be thinking here, you know, why would you use onion powder and garlic powder when you already put the fresh ones in? But the truth is that they have completely different flavor profiles. So when you add multiple things like that, it really builds layers of flavor and can give you more depth to the dish than just having like one or the other. Oh yeah, Julia, thank you for bringing that up. Mm -hmm. That's a really great point to make. Um, and again, that goes into getting that flavor without the salt in there, without as much salt. Mm -hmm. I've got all that cooking. I'm gonna add my seasoning mix in here. Just use my finger really quick. Okay, you don't. And then after, you, yep. Sorry, right, we have someone here saying that lemon thyme would be really good in that, and I completely agree. Lemon um, thyme is a, a different variety of thyme, um, and it's 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 a little bit different, but it's so good on everything. Oh, what's it called again? I'm sorry, I didn't catch that. Lemon thyme. Oh, okay. Which is different than just adding lemon and thyme. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so we've got our chicken in here cooking. Right now, I'm just making, making sure everything's nice and evenly dispersed because after we let our chicken cook, we are gonna be using a little bit of um, flour to thicken it, um, thicken our mixture and give us that thick texture um, for our pot pie. And we are gonna be adding some of our um, unsweetened almond milk today. We're gonna be using that instead of a heavy cream. And you know, that's a great option. You can certainly make a pot pie without all the cream and all the fat and it'll come out just wonderful. Mm, that's make sure to use the unflavored and unsweetened. I know they make unsweetened <laughs> vanilla flavored too, and that wouldn't go so well. <laughs> yeah, yeah, not for a chicken pot pie, maybe a, a different kind of pie, but not the chicken guy. <sighs> that would be awfully, awfully strange. Mm -hmm. Okay, so next I am gonna be adding my um, flour onto the mixture here. 
and we want to coat our vegetables with that. Again, that's going to thicken our mixture and um, give us a nice filling for our pot pie. I'm going to do that. And as I'm, as I'm mixing that in, I'm slowly going to be pouring in some of this unsweetened, unflavored <laughs> almond milk. So I'm going to just slowly pour that in, mix it, and get that, um, get our filling coated there. Sajwa, are you using a regular all-purpose flour today or are you using a whole grain flour? I'm using a regular all-purpose flour. But I guess if you wanted to, you could use a whole whole wheat too. That would be a great way to get more of the whole grains in there, that in combination with the whole wheat pie crust. Mm -hmm. That would be really nice. I'm gonna just add the rest of my milk there. All right. And we're gonna let that cook for just a moment. Yes, we will be temping our meat. Um, although this is going to go in the oven for about 25 minutes, I still want to make sure that my chicken is cooked all the way to 165. Um, and again, with cubes like this, one way to make sure that you've got it uh, cooked all the way is to just go ahead and stack a couple cubes of chicken on top of one another. Um, and that'll help you get to that um, thickness that you need to actually temp your meat because you don't want to get anything too, too thin. So I got my thermometer here. I'm going to do a quick temp on here. And the best practice is to um, find the thickest pieces that you can. You do not want to stick it down to the bottom of the pan or anything like that. That would not be smart. Because mm -hmm. um, then you would be getting the temperature of the pan and not the meat. <laughs> so I'm just checking this guy out. All right, we're getting there. So I'm gonna let that finish cooking. I might add a little bit more water to help it out and so it doesn't get too thick. And while I'm doing that, I'm gonna quickly work on my pie. Um, I'm sorry, I'm gonna work on my pan. And for this recipe, um, you're gonna to wanna to go ahead and oil the bottom of your pan. What makes this recipe a little bit different from other chicken pot pie recipes is that there isn't gonna be a bottom crust. So we're just gonna go ahead and put our mixture in our container like this. I went ahead and oiled this ahead of time. So you're gonna to wanna to make sure you oil your pan and we are gonna to wanna to make sure we make an egg wash. So an egg wash um, is basically gonna be one egg plus one tablespoon of water. And what we're gonna do with this is once we put our mixture in this um, pan right here, we're gonna spread our pie covering on top and then we're, we're gonna spread this egg wash on top and that's gonna allow a nice um, golden brown crispy top that's like, got, it has to be a part of a chicken pot pie. If you don't have that crispy golden top, it's not a chicken pot pie. So For this sure. egg wash is gonna help us get there. Um, so I went ahead and mixed that already, and you're just going to whisk that with a fork, and that'll do that. And we're just going to let this cook a little bit more. It smells phenomenal. Sometimes I wish we had smell-o-vision so you guys could see what I'm talking about. We'll smell what I'm talking about. <laughs> All right, let me tempt this one more time. We were really close last time, so I have a feeling we're gonna be there. All right, yeah, we are good to go. So, like I said, I've already oiled down this. Let me just turn my fire off and it might be smart to grab my handy dandy bits. <laughs> and we're going to pour our mixture into our container here, our baking pan. Let me just
you want to go ahead and evenly spread that. And you know, I bet if you, if you wanted to use a cast iron pan for this, you could probably just leave it in that pan and put the pastry on top, on top of the cast iron, since that can go in the oven. Yeah, that's a great point. Anyway, I now think fewer dishes. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I feel the same way. <laughs> so we are gonna unroll our uh, pie crust that we had gotten. Oh, it ripped on my way as I was unrolling it, but that's okay. And we wanna lie that on top. I'm make that nice little crust. Naturally, this pre-made pie crust came in the circle shape, <laughs> which is okay with us. So we'll just make it work. Sajwa, can you scoot that a little bit closer to your stove so we can see it from the top? Oh. Yes, thank you. Yeah, thank you. Is that good? Okay. Perfect. Then what we're going to do is we are going to put our egg wash, remember the one egg and the one, one tablespoon of water. We're going to put that on top, like so. We are going to spread that guy all over the top, making sure it's touching all the areas of that pie crust. Um, will get nice and golden for us. And that's a little trick okay. that will make you look like a professional. <laughs> the egg wash trick. Yeah. All right. Get a little carrot got in the middle. Brown top. <laughs> Come out. Okay. And so there we go. Oh, and then before you pop this in the oven, you're going to want to make sure to put a, like three slits into your pie. Um, and then you can put it in the oven for 25 minutes and it'll come out looking like so. Beautiful. So this is our, um, oh, it's saying my internet connection is unstable. Right? Am I still with you guys? Yeah, it's hello. It's still there for me. Oh, sorry, my internet connection is being unstable. But after you finish baking your chicken pot pie, it'll come out like this. Again, that's going to be 25 minutes in the oven, and then you're ready to go. So that's our chicken pot pie recipe, you guys. I'm going to pop this guy in the oven really quick. Awesome. Thank you so much, uh, Sajwa. That is such a beautiful recipe. Uh, thank you, Julia, for the nutrition education. We really appreciate it. Uh, thank you so much to our viewers uh, today. We had a lot of awesome tips and tricks. Uh, so hopefully you guys try this recipe. Um, if any of our viewers do try this recipe, uh, let us know. Let us know what you changed, what you liked, what you didn't like. Or even if you have recipe ideas for the future, um, you know, comment on, you, on YouTube or Facebook and let us know. We're always looking for new recipes. Um, and we'll try to work in your suggestions for future videos. So please do that for us. Um, also, if you have a minute after this video, please take our survey. Um, again, you will need a survey code, which I have right here. Again, that survey code is E097929. And again, that'll all be in the description of our video. Uh, finally, we'd like to thank Erin Clark with wellplated.com for the inspiration for this uh, lovely recipe for today. So uh, again, just check out the description for all of our links that you will need. So thank you again, everyone, for watching this episode of Cooking Connected. Uh, we will be back again next Thursday at 2 p.m. So if you're able to join us, we hope to see you there. Thank you so much, everyone. Have a great day.